In this scene, we'll learn how to turn particles into an exposure effect source. We'll see how the exposure effect source tag allows us to pass various properties from our particles to our simulation. We'll control which properties we add, such as velocity and color, and how we can vary and modify those properties to control the look of our volume. And finally, we'll create some explosions using particle velocity and pressure. All right, so here we are in Cinema 4D, and as you can see, we've added a few objects to our scene already. We have this Explosure Effects object, which is default everything except for the voxel size, which is a little lower, and therefore it's a higher res simulation. We then have this XP emitter, and it's best to just play back and we'll see what that is doing. And you can see we're getting a very sparse simulation. We are only adding two per second, they're moving from left to right with a variable speed, and they've also got some variable radii. Okay, so we want to uh, turn this emitter into a particle source. We need to make it a source for exposure effects. And we do that just as we would with some geometry or a spline by adding the exposure effects source tag. So let's right click the XP emitter and add an exposure effects source tag. And there we go. So this tag is actually contextual depending on what type of object it is on. And we can compare these two if I actually add some geometry to our scene. Just add this cube. And what we'll do is we'll just copy this tag to the cube and we'll pay attention to this attributes manager. And if we look at the difference when I do it, you'll see that a bunch of properties are different. And what we can do is we can actually put these side by side. If I actually click this box with a plus symbol, it means it's gonna open up an extra um, attributes window and we can go back on this one to our particle uh, exposure effects source tag and the one on the left here is the one that we have on the cube so immediately we can see that there's a solid checkbox that is not a, uh, is not on the one that's on the, the emitter and that's because particles don't have a surface they're not polygonal they don't have points in that sense and therefore it's pointless to have the solid checkbox um, we have these very familiar sliders Obviously, all the properties that we can add into our exposure effect simulation, such as smoke, heat, fuel, curl, velocity, and pressure, all of those can be found in the particle-based um, uh, source tag. Uh, the only one that's different is actually this color multiplier. And the difference is because uh, on the object, it has the color from object, shader, or custom, and that's based on things like the UV and applying color to the whole object, whereas particles, of course, carry their own color data. So let's close this attributes window and actually let's turn the emitter off and let's just press play. And so we've seen this before perhaps. This is a piece of geometry and all we've had to do is we've, had, we've added this exposure effects source tag to it and we are seeing those properties being applied to the voxels and then the resulting sim that follows. Now let's get rid of that because we're done with that one. Turn our emitter on and press play. Now you might be expecting it to do exactly the same thing as it does when it's on a, a piece of geometry. Well, that's a fundamental difference between the exposure effects source tag as a, a, a particle source versus an object source. What's happening is, is this tag is actually a multiplier for channels for properties that are actually carried on the particles. What I mean by that is when I go to the XP emitter, go to the extent, extended data tab, physical data, you can see we have these properties here. We have temperature, smoke, and fuel, and they're all set to zero currently. So they're not carrying any of this data. What we're gonna do is we're gonna increase the amount of fuel. And now you're seeing fuel being added to our simulation. If I add temperature, we'll start a combustion reaction, a burning reaction. So these particles are now carrying both the temperature property and the fuel property and where they intersect with the voxels of our exposure effects simulator, simulation, they start to generate that data. They start to actually solve that data. Okay, I'm actually gonna take the buoyancy off this so we get nice straight lines behind our, our particles. It'll just help us see things a bit more clearly. Go back to zero, there we go. Okay, and likewise, if I go back to the emitter and the physical data tab, if I just wanted some smoke, I'm just gonna multiply smoke by one, like so, and we just, just get smoke now. So in the actual tag itself, I go back to that, you'll see we have these multipliers. Now I can just drop that down, and now the new particles, uh, or sorry, all of the particles will actually be multiplied by this value. 
and we can reduce the smoke right down. I mean, they're adding quite a lot of smoke as it is. So I can drop it right down to 1% multiplication and we get a much sparser smoke simulation, as you can see. And this, this obviously uh, counts for all of the other channels as well. Uh, we have control over pressure, so we can increase the pressure and you'll see that expands the fluid out based on the, the pressure being imparted into the voxels there. I'll put that back to zero. And of course we have this velocity multiplier. Now if I turn that to zero, in fact let's reset our, uh, sorry, in our emitter, let's go back and add some temperature and fuel and get rid of our smoke so that we get our nice burning back. There we go. Now that isn't such a nice look because of course what is occurring now is that we have taken all of the velocity from the particles and we are ignoring it completely. We are not pushing that into the simulation and therefore because we have no other uh, source of uh, velocity that the it looks like a very straight and kind of artificial looking simulation there. So obviously I'd recommend that you have some velocity imparted onto the simulation so we just multiply that up and at 100% it's going to be implying all of the velocity of the particle into those voxels and it looks much more natural I would say. We also have this option here called curl. Now curl is really excellent. This this parameter will actually fight with the velocity though so what if you've got it at 100% if the particles are moving at a certain speed the they're going to overpower this curl parameter. So what you want to do is you want to really crank this up beyond the 100% and we'll see that it's really starting to just disrupt the motion of those particles. It's not just giving us that even path. Now, if we increase the resolution, we'll actually see this even more clearly. Go to the solver tab, drop the voxel size to two, and then play again. And there we go. We can really see our, our particle meteors here churning up and, and uh, disrupting using that curl value. So get some lovely motion out of those. Now, I'm going to increase the voxel size again. And I'm going to go back to our emitter. I'm actually going to duplicate our emitter. And I'm just going to demonstrate something that's really cool with these particle sources. And I'm going to rotate it on this axis. And I'm going to move it down to here. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go to the, the tag here. And I don't want to add any properties other than velocity. So you can see here, I'm just going to take the velocity. And we're going to add a few more particles. So let's go for something like 50, really exaggerate things. Uh, let's give it a different seed as well, just in case it looks a bit too much like the other one, like so. And now we'll see that the particles that are interacting, are hitting our other simulation, let's hide them, are actually disrupting it. They're imparting their velocity onto the other parts of the fluid. So this is a really great way of controlling your fluid, of creating really natural looking effects. You could actually even have things like rain moving through um, the 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 fluid here and actually disrupting it and making it look really cool like so. Okay, so that's just a little bonus thing there with the emitter source. Now we've talked about color earlier on and we have the color slider here. If I go to the emitter, currently we're just emitting a single color. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set it to gradient random. Then I'm going to create a gradient that has some sort of spectral colors. So it has a few different colors. Let's actually delete those. Let's just have start with this red one. If we actually bring the color wheel up, we can create a, a swatch here. And we're going to select this one at the end here. And I'm just going to create a couple more knots like so. I'm going to zero that one out. Make sure they're at 100% saturation. In fact, we should probably do six to give it a nice, even, uh, rich prime colors. Drag that onto our gradient. Oops. There we go. And there we go. We get this mix of colors. And I'm going to make those step so we actually get a, uh, you know, a, a harsh change. Uh, we either get the full red, full yellow, full green, and so on. I'm going to distribute those just so that we get, make sure that we get this one at the end here as well. And if I hit play, we should see some colors in the particles now. In fact, let's turn our exposure effects. And there we go. We can see our particles actually have some color. Now, of course, in exposure effects, we need to enable the color channel so that it can be solved for. Go to Exposure Effects and activate the color channel there. And then we need to display that in the Display tab. Grab Color. And let's hit Play and see what we get. So now we can see that we're getting the particles added. Uh, their color is being transferred from the tag to the Exposure Effects simulation. 
and we're getting this nice multicolored look like so. So obviously this would be great for, again, for powder paints and things like that, uh, explosions, uh, nice vivid colors. Uh, let's just uh, give that some, a bit of an angle variation, just to see it as we change the velocities and these should intersect a bit. In fact, let's increase the height. I just want to see a few of them sort of crisscross each other. There we go. Those colors are actually going to mix as they, they crisscross. There we go. The blue one's really mixing with those. That's looking nice. And there we go. So that's the color multiplier. And of course, if I decrease that down, it'll actually just become uh, darker until uh, no color is actually added to the channel. So you can see it almost goes transparent. It's just another multiplier like we've had with all the other um, properties. Okay, so we know that our particles can carry these physical properties and those properties can then be multiplied by our exposure effects source tag. But what's the main advantage of that? Well, if we take a look at the emitter again, uh, in fact, let's uh, go back to our exposure effects object, go back to fuel and smoke display, go back to our emitter and let's change it from being at an angle and just have them all left to right again. And let's, uh, let's actually drop our curl right down again as well. Let's drop that off like so. And there we go. We're getting this simple uh, left to right animation. What I'm going to do is I'm also going to make the size of the particles all the same. It's just for convenience. Let's make them seven units in radius. There we go. Maybe a bit more. Let's go for 10. Like so. Okay, so currently all of these have the same amount of smoke, uh, sorry, of fuel and temperature on them. If we go to the extended data tab, physical data, you know that we have a universal one unit and one unit of temperature and fuel each on every single particle. And therefore, there's no variation in our simulation. However, what we can do is we can set those to 0.5 and 0.5 and then vary it by 0.5 and 0.5, which means we're getting a value between zero and one. Hit play, and you'll see our first particle barely adds any fuel at all. And then we have our other particles giving us various amounts. So this is a, a great way of creating lots of variation amongst the particles. And one of the big advantages of carrying that data per particle. Now, of course, if I increase that back to one and one and one there, what I can do also is I can actually modify those properties on the particles using a modifier. So let's go to the modifiers and we're going to grab a control modifier and the XP physical modifier. And of course, physical is dealing with temperature, uh, fuel and smoke. We're just going to look at uh, the, uh, the temperature and the fuel. So currently the default temperature mode is to change over time. And at the moment it's adding an extreme amount to, of temperature to the particles, we actually want it to decrease. I actually want it to decay the amount of temperature that there is on the particles. So I'm going to actually do a negative point, let's say point 0.1. This will be quite extreme, I think. And then change fuel activated, and then change over time, and then we're going for a negative one on point 0.1 on that one as well. So what will happen is, is as soon as I emit the particles, the physical mod modifier is kicking in and then every second it's removing, or every frame it's removing a certain amount of fuel. And eventually it actually just has no more fuel left to ignite. Now the smoke's moving along, of course, because we have velocity inheritance. However, uh, we are now changing the properties of each of these particles with this physical modifier. Of course, we can go the other way with this. So we could actually start with no fuel or no smoke on these particles. Uh, no fuel and no temperature on these particles, like so. Go to the physical modifier, and now we've got a positive change. And let's do the same on the temperature. And uh, it's quite quick, but they are essentially now fading in. So we're actually increasing the amount of fuel and the amount of temperature. Now you can see it gets a bit extreme towards the end, so we can actually cap it. So temperature and fuel. And there we go, we get a bit more of a natural simulation. Uh, we could divide this by a certain amount. Let's do divide by five, divide by five, and this will be a much more gradual increase in those properties. So this has some real potential for very controllable simulations. We can carry data on the particles themselves. We can then modify that data, which is then transferred via the XP source tag 
to our exposure effects simulation. Now, I'm using large particles here, but we don't have to use large particles. If I go to the emitter, let's change our display to, let's go to squares, go to the emission tab, and let's massively increase the number of particles that we are adding to our simulation here. I'm gonna change our shape of our emitter here, and let's actually increase the cone angle. So they're actually moving off in an angle. And I hit play, and you'll see that now we're actually kind of getting a good representation of the shape of our emission there. We're actually seeing the shape of our particles. And of course, if we mod modified those particles with another X particles modifier, we can control where this simulation is going. So let's grab a motion modifier. Let's grab an attractor like so. And let's put that down over here. And I'm gonna change it to a force mode and I'm gonna make it quite a strong force. Now, if I hit play, you'll see that we are modifying the particles, we're dragging them towards our attractor here. And of course, because those particles are generating our fluid, our fluid follows as well. However, the fluid is free to, to calculate and vortice on its own because of course, we are only um, imparting particle velocity and things like that. However, it can escape and actually end up moving around wherever it likes. So there we go, we've created something like a, a almost like a flamethrower simulation here, and it's fading in using that XP physical mod. Now, another really great use for particle sources is to create explosions. So really fast moving particles that exist only for a few fractions of a second, and they expand out really fast and then they vanish, but they impart the fluid to the simulation, which creates this beautiful expanding explosion. So I'm gonna put our emitter into the, sort of the middle of the container again. I'm gonna get rid of our physical and attractor modifiers. And of course, we're gonna to need to reset our physical data because I'd actually zeroed that out in the emitter here. So extended data, physical data, and then we're gonna add some temperature and some fuel. Make sure that the particles have that and you can see that is working. Now, of course, we need to change the shape of our emitter here so that it all comes from a point. It's gonna explode out from a point. So go to object, change it to a sphere, change the radius down to one, and we'll leave it at normal because it's gonna fire out from the center. Go back to the emission tab, change it to a shot mode. So we're only firing it out on a single frame. Let's do a hundred particles to start with, and let's give them a finite life. So they're just gonna exist for a, for a few frames. Let's make it two with a variation of one. Uh, and then have the speed really high. Let's say, set the speed to say uh, 500 with a variation of 200. And then the particle size, we can make that, let's do a 10 with a variation of five. So let's hit play and see what happens. And there we go, we get this sudden expansion of the particles, they're firing out. And then the fluid sim, the, the properties are being imparted into the voxels. And then we get that advected fluid from that sudden burst of particles. So let's look at that again. And you can see we get that lovely looking pop burst. It's a little bit like a flak explosion inside, uh, like an anti-aircraft flak explosion. Uh, we could add another emitter. We could duplicate that one now. And because it's all set up in the emitter already, we can actually go here and change the shot time to a little bit of a different time. Change the seed value and then hit play. And we'll get two different types of explosion near next to each other and we've created ourselves a handy little explosion rig. Now, of course, a real explosion has a lot of pressure involved, so we could actually increase the pressure, we could increase the curl amount, and we'll get some more variation in our simulation. Let's really increase the pressure here. And there you go, you get this huge explosion and then evolving fluid simulation after that point. Okay, so there we have it for particle sources in explosion effects adding an XP exposure effect source tag to an XP emitter opens up lots of different opportunities to create really custom looking visual effects.